Hi guys, welcome to another video in this channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how to prepare this model for 3D printing. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna divide this model into sections so that it's easy to print. And once we have all of the sections and we assemble them, we can easily fix any like seam lines that we might get. So as you can imagine, if we were gonna print this thing big for like cosplay reasons or whatever, uh, we cannot print it in a single piece unless we have like a huge 3D printer. But usually 3D printers have a volume of around this size. So I'm thinking about how how to divide this thing right here and let me show you real quick my idea on how we're gonna be splitting it where is my snipping tool right here so I'm gonna create a quick snip right here and if we take a look at the snipping tool there we go I'm gonna use my little marker here let's use a red marker so I'm gonna do a division here in the horn right around this area another one right around this area okay and then we're gonna follow this line right here and we're gonna cut across like this. The reason why I wanna do this cut right here is because I wanna keep the seam line on an area that's easy to hide. And this border right here, of course, that line right there, and that place right there is gonna be like nicely, it's gonna be a nice place to do so. Another thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating keys, which is this sort of like cube shapes that we sometimes use, positive on one side and negative on another side so that things can match properly. You could of course print things without keys, but then lining them up can be a little bit difficult. So we're gonna have a key right here going in, another key right here going in, and probably one key right here and another one like right here to make sure that again, things match properly when we 3D print the elements. So let's start by splitting the elements right here. And we're gonna be using um, booleans to do so. So I'm going to add a, a pen here, a new cube. And I'm going to use this cube to divide the main sections of the ear. So I'm going to rotate this cube around and I'm going to position it so that it encompasses the section of the horn that I want to divide, which is right around there, I would say. There we go. There's, of course, a lot of like post processing that we need to do later on for for the horns so let's do that one. or, or for, for the whole mask and i'm going to be recording that as well uh, on another video so if you want to see that process make sure to subscribe as well so i'm going to go here and this one we're going to uh, mirror to the other side so mirror okay there we go and if we set up like booleans here and we do intersection as you can see right here that's going to pretty much cut the horns uh from the rest of the elements i am going to bring this thing up a little bit like that because i was seeing some weird like uh, cuts uh, over there and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so this tells me that the the element right here is going to be cut properly so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go to divide right here and i'm going to say make boolean or boolean make boolean mesh and what this will do is it will cut the mask into a single piece now i'm going to do intersection and i'm also going to do make boolean mesh both of these boolean meshes are now up here in my new tools and i got the mask and i got the little horns i'm gonna go to the mask and before i join everything back together i want to cut this one as well so for this one i'm gonna append a new cube append a new cube there we go and we're gonna position this cube right across the center line right there there we go so as we've mentioned before we're gonna cut the mask right around there let's use transparency to see where we're doing it that looks about right. I'm gonna rotate a little bit so we like match the corner there. Again, corners I find they're a little bit easier to to match, and um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, of course, we need to move this vertex down so that we can properly match uh, or like cover the whole mask. So I'm gonna use my move brush here, and I'm just gonna make this very very small. One thing we can do is we can go to C Modeler. Let me turn on this, guys. I'm gonna go to Delete here, and I'm gonna delete this edge loop complete and yeah pretty much just that one then i'm going to select all of these lines right there invert the mask and just move them down Ooh, my dog is doing crazy stuff over here let's now grab this guys right here invert the mask and move them down i'm gonna go to get them closer right there grab this outer edges again Invert the mask and try to match the element right there. I'm not sure why. Oh, that's a problem. So that's a problem because, as you can see, we get a very weird effect um, going across the whole thing. So let's try something a little bit different here. I am uh, going to delete this cube. Okay. We're going to go to initialize over here, and we're going to start with a very simple cube. And on the options, because this is a, a more traditional cube, on the options of the initialize thing, I am going to remove the V divide and remove the H divide. So that we pretty much actually there's another easier way 
I'm just going to go to the star. And on the star, I'm going to go to key cube. There we go. So key cube with one division. There we go. That's what I want. I'm going to make this a poly mesh 3D. Now we go back to the mask sub tool and we append that P cube that we have right there. Now we go to the cube and we make this a lot bigger. Perfect. So this thing is going to be here on the front. And that way I'm going to have access to this face right here. This one, which I can Q mesh and push out, right? And by doing that, I should be able to use my, um, again, with C modeler, I can use the move option and just move this down a little bit more or just like mask it. There we go. And find the proper angle right there. Let's remove the mask, go to the vertex and I'm going to, oh, wait, can I move the vertex? Am I snapping or something? That's really weird. Give me one second. It was because of the auto masking. So I'm going to go here to brush and remove uh, auto masking. So auto mask, back to the masking. There we go. Perfect. So we're just going to move this line up right there. And again, we can check this with uh, removing this element. And as long as we don't see anything else, that seems to be working perfectly fine. So yeah, that's the, the second part of the mask that we're going to be printing. So I'm going to go again to Boolean, make Boolean mesh. That's going to give me the bottom part of the mask. And then I'm going to do intersection, which is going to be give me the top part of the mask. And I'm going to say make Boolean mesh. Of course, if you have a smaller printer, you can like divide this even more times. But this should work nicely. I'm going to go to this piece right here. I'm going to say append and we're going to append the lower portion. And I'm going to say append and we're going to append the horns. So now we have all of the parts that we need to start creating the keys. So these are going to be the three main volumes, the three main volumes. Of course, I know that this center volume right here is going to be the one that's going to take the longest to print because it's the it's the biggest one. But again, it should work perfectly, perfectly fine. So uh, now let's add the keys. And for the keys, I'm going to append the same cube that we did before, the little small cube. This one right here. Let me move it to the top. Oh, select the cube. I'm going to move it to the top. And what I want to do is I want to create a nice like tapered edge for the whole thing. But another thing that I need to do is I'm going to have to move the pivot point down. But for now, let's just jump into this guy. We're going to go to taper and we're going to taper this thing up like this. To remove any sort of curvature, we can use this option right here. And if we bring this down to like, uh, like one, it should be perfectly, perfectly like cylindrical or, or solid like this. Now I'm going to I'm going to go back to my gizmo to gizmo 3D. I'm going to move or reset this thing, move the pivot point down to the base. Very important that we move it down to the base and we're going to duplicate this. Now this one I'm going to rename and I'm going to call this positive oh, right here. Positive. So this one is going to be the positive key. And this one right here needs to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to turn on transparency here. So it has to be a little bit bigger than the positive key. If we do them exactly the same, unless you have a super, super, super precise 3D printer, you're going to have issues like fitting this thing on. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. It's, it's always, I find it's a little bit easier to fill in a negative point. If it's too loose, you just add a little bit of clay or something, and then it fits nicely than having something that's too tight. And then you have to like scratch away or remove a uh, volume. So so this one right here is going to be named. Uh, where's the rename? There we go. This is one that's going to be renamed negative. Perfect. So now what we need to do is we need to move these two guys together and position them where they're supposed to be. And uh, to do that, I'm going to go to this positive one and I'm actually going to uh, merge it. So I'm going to merge down. So even though we renamed them, it's, it's going to be gone now. So now we have two elements that are in the same place. I'm going to go to auto groups on my polygroups option. And now we're going to have the positive and the negative in two different polygroups. And the only thing I need to do is I need to bring this and get them into position where these things meet. So I'm going to turn off this guys, for instance, and uh, we're going to rotate this around like this guy right here. And I'm going to position it on one of the horns like right here again, it has to be as close as possible to the surface right there. Perfect. Now, of course, we need to center this. So they're in the center of the volume. And we might need to scale them. As you can see, this one's a little bit too big. So I'm going to scale both of them at the same time. So that they're inside of the volume and that we still have enough like thickness on the other side. So 
that right there seems about uh, about right. Um, I'm immediately what I'm going to do here is I am going to uh, duplicate this once over here. And I'm going to explain why in a second. And then this one right here, I'm just going to mirror mirror and hit OK. So now uh, this one over here. Oh, I'm going to mask this guy right here. Let's go to this side. Place the pivot point as clean as possible to where it's supposed to be and push this in. I was pretty sure that it was going to be symmetrical, but for whatever reason, it's not. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Again, just make sure that there's enough volume there for this thing to print. Seems like there is. And there we go. So now if we isolate this guys real quick, you guys remember that we have the polygroups, right? So we got like the internal and the external uh, shape. And what I'm going to do here again, let's just turn on polygroups so that we can see them. They should have the same polygroups. I'm just going to say split group split and hit OK. And now we're going to have the positive here and the other one right here. So that's the positive and this is going to be the negative where the positive is going to like fit. That's the first preparation. Let's go to this one right here. Let's hide this one for just a second. Let's get out of isolation mode. And now we're going to play with uh, this piece right here. So this second one that we have right here, I'm going to move it. And again, since this is already going to be a big place or a big uh, element, I'm going to rotate this around. Let's turn on transparency. And this key should be on the other piece. Now, it seems like the cut was not perfect right here. Again, not the end of the world, but we might need to find like the perfect angle or as close as possible as we can just to make sure that this fits as nicely as possible because we do need this to be like flat against the surface so that it prints properly. Otherwise, we're going to have to, again, like chisel out or remove a little bit more volume. So I'm probably going to have to do that. And uh, and then we're going to have to just sand away a little bit of the element. It's not that bad. But it's not perfect either. So, OK, so that's going to be one of the keys. And then this one is very clean. So I'm just going to um, duplicate this one as well. There we go. This one's going to be right there. We might need to like change the, the shape or the direction of this one a little bit again, so that we don't remove too much volume. But as long as we capture the, the element, that should be, that should be good enough. 3D printing, again, it's it's more like prototyping. So there's always a little bit of like a room for, for error that we need to, to keep in mind. There we go. So now um, if we isolate this real quick, let's uh, isolate this, guys. We should be able to, it doesn't seem to be groups. I'm going to say auto groups. I'm going to graph. There we go. Control W and Control W. And now I'm going to say group split and hit OK. And there we go. So now we got all of the like pieces that we need. Oh, it seems like we move this one. Oh my God. Why did I do that? Okay. Let's go back here. I'm just going to say merge and merge visible. Sorry, not merge visible, merge down. So we combine those two guys right there. I'm going to select this guys, invert the mask. And we're going to have to do another correction right here. So this one's going to be right around there. It's a little bit annoying because it's very difficult to to match this from all of the angles. Ideally, if I could, well, it's not that if I couldn't, but <laughs> I don't want to re-record the whole thing again. Um, ideally, I would just go back and make sure that this is a clean cut from the very beginning. There we go. That's probably that's what we're gonna have to do. Perfect. So uh, split and uh, group split. Hit OK. Perfect. So now we got all of the pieces that we need to start creating the final like a uh, dynamesh or boolean pieces. And uh, let's just go with it. So let's start with the horns first, which are the easy ones. So for the horns, we are going to need this guys right here on the positive side. So let's turn this guys off and off. And from this two guys, let's find which ones are the positive. So this ones, the small ones are the positives. So we combine both of this guys and we're going to use light boolean. Right now they're set to add. And we're going to say Boolean, make Boolean mesh. Uh, it's doing the remeshing thing. 
and there we go so we got this guys right here and uh, yeah seems to be working fine if we take a look at this guys there should be a a merged effect right there cool is this properly done i think so one quick way to test this is just do dynamesh and if they merge then we're fine cool so this one's immediately i'm gonna export and we're gonna export them as uh, i'm gonna export them actually as fbx's i'm gonna call this kindred horns there we go hit okay now i'm gonna go to the next one so the next piece is gonna be of course the mask right not the horns not this guys but this guys and this guys are gonna be negative so i can grab this guys i'm gonna push them up and what we should see here is the negative like this guy's removing themselves from the element okay i'm gonna have to push them just a tad bit up there we go it's just like a mini millimeter so that's fine we were right on the edge that's why we weren't seeing it and since we're already doing this piece right here uh we also need to remove the volume from uh this ones right here so those are the these are the big ones so the big ones are this ones and we're gonna delete there we go so now we again make boolean mesh and we're gonna have uh, this mask right here with the holes on the top and the holes on the bottom and we're gonna export this again as kindred let's call this up hit okay and finally we just go back to this guys right here there we go and now we're gonna do the lower portion of the mask and these small bits right here as positive insets and we're just gonna say again boolean and make boolean mesh and uh, we got this guy right here we're gonna export and this is gonna be kindred lower perfect now i'm gonna open blender and i'm gonna do blender just because it opens faster but you can do this in maya uh we're gonna be doing maya very very soon don't worry guys i'm not i i'm not a purist so i can use blender i can use maya i can use whatever software we have available we're gonna go file import and we're gonna import some fbx's let's go here to kindred and we got kindred horns and then file import fbx kindred lower file import fbx kindred upper and the reason why i am importing everything is i just want to make sure that they like fit perfectly and as you can see they do so this guy right here is gonna inset and uh, like insert itself on those elements very very nicely this one is gonna do the exact same thing down here and we got the holes for this piece right here so the mask is ready to be printed as you can see we have these four sections if the printer was a small and we couldn't print this whole like big section right here i would probably like divide this in half as well and again there's a lot of like polish and post-processing that we do after the fact but uh yeah this is pretty much it my friends this is how you prepare the pieces for a 3d print by adding the keys you can use booleans instead of blender maya or seabrush i personally find seabrush to be a bit a little bit faster uh but yeah once you're there we are again ready to go into the 3d printing so i'm gonna start 3d printing this i don't have a filament 3d printer i'm gonna ask one of my uh, friends to do that for me and once we have the mask ready i'll show you guys so thanks a lot for watching if you want to learn a lot uh, more about how we did this mask or how the 3d world works make sure to subscribe and make sure to join our discord channel we have a lot of cool stuff in there and i'm gonna be super happy to meet you guys there as well so that's it for now i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye